Cuba was the capital of the most profitable traffic of the Western world, slavery. Once free, black men and women were brutally seized from their homes and families on the dark continent and chained like wild beasts in the filthy holes of slave ships, condemned to be chattel. Slavery was legal and slaves were valuable merchandise. Even the royal families of Europe derived thousands of pounds from their investments in the slave trade. Only the strongest of the black captives survived the long and perilous voyage across the Atlantic. They marched to Havana's great slave market. These once proud people, some of them kings, princes in their own land, were felt by avaricious hands and auctioned off to the wealthy Cuban landowners to tend the vast sugar and tobacco fields and breed more slaves. Strong young bucks and wenches were hand-picked from the best tribes to breed a new race of prime slaves. One such breeder was Tambora, an African king enslaved and drawn into a forbidden alliance with Doña Mariana, his owner's mistress. Perverted by their riches, the landowners mated their blacks in love arenas for the amusement of their friends and jaded mistresses like the perverse Mariana, whose lust allowed her to be loved, even by her slave, Rachel. The color line was rigidly enforced for black men and white women, but Mariana, attracted to Tambora's savage beauty, let lust outweigh caution and took Tambora as her lover. For a black man to even look at a white woman would have brought fatal results. Tambora was made an example so that every slave would know what it meant when a black touched a white woman. For Mariana, the seeds of disaster became all too really sown. I'm going to have a baby. A boy. A little black bastard of a baby. I will take care of everything. No one will know. It will be my child. They fled to New Orleans. 
where Mariana had her black baby, Drum. Rachel raised him as her own, and Mariana became the most celebrated madam in New Orleans. By 1860, there appeared another breed of slavers, like Hammond Maxwell of Falconhurst. Most civilized nations had condemned slave trading, but slavers got around this problem and made a fortune by breeding their blacks like horses and selling their issue to the cotton plantation. Who is he? I think he's called Drum. Drum? He's the son of Mariana's slave, Rachel. What a splendid animal he would be, huh? Stripped down, naked. Oui. Perhaps a good fighting nigger. Quel dommage. Dommage? Yes, pity a body like that, surrounded by beautiful women, being wasted as a bartender. You know, I wouldn't mind owning him. Cher de Marigny. I didn't know you were in the market for a stud. I'm always in the market for a young stud. Oh, cher Lazare. <laughs> well, I want to tell you, girls, I've spent a lovely afternoon with you, and I sure hate to lose you now, but your time's up. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Oh, yes. Ah, the Monier. Hi. Hi. Bonsoir, Ramon. How did the sale go? Oh, good, good. Thirty thousand dollars worth of niggas went in less than three hours, and there's plenty more to come. Fantastic. <laughs> Listen, that Yankee baboon Lincoln gets himself elected and starts a war. <laughs> C'est impossible. No, 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 no. It's not impossible at all, mon Dieu. Every southern legislature is seriously discussing secession. Well, we ain't gonna worry about that kind of hen shit. <laughs> Abolition ain't never going to take roots in these here parts. Never! Bye-bye, Jacques. Mariana. Hammond. I got to talk to you about my daughter's soul. Not now, Hammond. Sure, now. Why, what's wrong with now? Could we do it tomorrow morning? Oh. Meanwhile, enjoy yourself. That's a hell of an idea. Gentlemen, gentlemen. When all passions have been spent and all buttons have been uh, rebuttoned, eh? <laughs> there will be a pugilistic encounter in the courtyard. You can't be with me. Oh, yes, sir, yes. I, 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 you know, you, know, you got the bar. Yeah. We'll go and amuse yourselves for a while, eh? We will have a marvelous evening. It's <laughs> Bastille. Pompey is not coming. Come on. Mais non, mon vieux. His own lord decided not to let him fight a week before his march in Baton Rouge. Oh, this salaud. That will cost him his life. Mon Dieu, I would not be made to look like a fool. I invited 30 of my friends here tonight, and I promised them a fight. That is not my responsibility. Drum must fight my nigger tonight. That is impossible. Cher ami, if you do not do as I ask, I shall withdraw my patronage from this place, and all of my friends will do likewise. 
I can also persuade the city officials to shut you down. I realize it seems a simple thing, but when I don't get my way, I can be ruthless. I will destroy you, Mariana. You don't give me a choice. Absolutely not. Gentlemen, gentlemen, is there anyone who has not yet made his bets? No, no, no. no. Good. Then let the pipe come in. Let's go. I hope you got a hard head for it, because you're going to need it. on the ground than you did on your feet. What will you do with him? Hmm? Since he doesn't seem to have any balls, he won't miss the ones he's wearing. Did you sell him? 
Yell thy gin the bastard away. Madame Mariana. <laughs> the game is yours. And for that superb five drum, you shall be rewarded. You have already rewarded me. Blaze, that piece of merit is no reward. What would you like, Brown? Name anything. A woman. A woman? A woman of my own. <laughs> oh, très bien. You shall have your wish. Lazar, get that flesh peddler Maspero. Tell him to bring his best stock of wenches and parade them. Before our drum. You all right? Yeah. Ah. Your name is Blaze. I'm drunk. You're going to stay at Madame Mariana's. We're going to be friends. Friends? You damn near kill me. Come along, hurry up, get them moving. I'm sure Drum must be getting very impatient by now, huh? Come on, 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 Feel the merchandise. <laughs> oh, what's the matter, Drum? You're bashful, hmm? <laughs> Let me assist you, since I have much more experience in these matters, huh? Oh, I'm afraid this poor wench is totally unsuited for you, <laughs> since both of her titties uh, would not fill one of your hands, hmm? Turn around. Stand still. Show me your ass. Hmm. Well, I went. Ooh. Very interesting. No! Oh, attends un petit peu, là. This one seems not only to have the spirit, but uh, I think perhaps the promise of a fine sheath for your rapier drum. Get her over here. Oh, 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 no! Adram no! <laughs> no! has a little fight on his hands. Huh? No! 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 Why are you fighting me, girl? Ain't no nigga gonna rape me. I was raised by a white master. No white man could ever love you like I will. I want this one. Très bien. I've made a splendid choice. My master was saving me for his son, but my master died and the son never come back. So I never had a man. You have a man now, Clinda. I do now. You like me better being a virgin. That's white man's thinking. Always afraid of something bigger. Better's been there before then.
Abraham, it's time to repay me for my generosity in giving you this beautiful woman to enjoy whenever you want. I would like to join you. She's mine. You said so yourself. She's mine alone. Oh, don't worry. I don't want your woman, Dram. You can have her all to yourself. But you. Your beautiful body. Oh, that would please me. You love it, Dram. Ah, you love it. No! Let him be! Let him you black be! Leave her alone, damn it! Leave her alone! Huh? If you were a white man, I would kill you in a duel. But it would be too quick, too easy to put a bullet in your brain. With a nigger. There are other ways, painful ways, that take a long time. I assure you, Drum, you will not like it. Mariana, I want me a living hole for back in Falcon Hush. I want her to be white. A good talk and a good dresser and don't drink. You mean like a mistress? No, I wanted to run my house and raise up my little daughter Sophie. She's a been a getting in mischief and a running wild like she is. Hmm. What you seem to want, Hammond, is a wife. <laughs> no, I don't want no wife. I had me two. The first one, Sophie's mother. Ah, oh, she was a pretty little thing but meaning to plow up snake. And the second one run off with a melodrama actor. <laughs> That's why I want a hoe. So I won't think she ain't and then discover that she is. <laughs> you want a hoe to raise your daughter? Well, it'd be a whole lot better than one of them high family gals that goes around spreading her legs for her brothers and cousins and which all. No, I figure that a woman who's been a hoeing ain't likely to want a young gal of doing the same thing. If you get them, I mean it. I'll see what I can do. You know that Mendingo boy drum? I keep two thousand dollars for him. A drum? I took him back to Falcon Hush. It'd be a nice place for him. We don't grow no cotton, just niggers. I'll take good care of him, and he'll be a breeder. I just don't want to sell him, Hammond. Twenty-five hundred dollars. You think on that? Rachel, mm -hmm. I've been thinking about Drum. What a fine man he's grown up to be. Mm -hmm. And you're such a good mother to him. I sometimes forget I ever gave birth to Drum. He's the only person I have ever loved. Except for you, Marianne. And he looks so much like his father. Better looking than his father. <laughs> You've always hated him. Why, Rachel? Let it lie. The past is as dead as Tambora. You're right, that's all. Thumbs up. Let's 
thing and do a little sparring. We can do this shit later on. No, uh, maybe somebody else is. Oh, no, those white folks were all passed out. They were hurrying, snoring, and drunk. Come on, you got a lot to learn. All right. All right. I want you to remember what I showed you. I want you to keep your hands up high. I want you to go for it. The heart in the head. I want you to remember that. Now watch me, okay? Heart in the head, right? Okay, now you try. Come on. Heart in the head, right? And and don't swing. Punch. Heart in the head. Come on. Come on. That's it. That's it. That's beautiful. Come on. Right. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Blaze. I'm sorry. Yeah, so am I. You're learning too damn fast. <laughs> Drum! Will you stop this fisticuff? You know Madame Mariana don't want you out here fighting like a street dog. If she caught you, what was she? I gotta fight my mom. I want to be a champion fighter. What a man wants and what a man gets ain't always the same thing. Especially a black man. As for you, Blaze. Maybe a black man ain't free as the wind yet. But he ought to be given that fighting chance. Let's whip both talk, son. Stand over there, nigger, unless you want to die first. In that other fight, Drum, I'm afraid I underestimated you. So this time I'm giving you a far worthier opponent than Blaze. Allow me to present Babouin, a champion of certain unpleasant skills, as you are about to learn. You are going to fight him with your fists. He fights with a knife. Come on, whole house boy. Come on, get your eggs cut off. Cuts good, don't it? Sharp as a racer. for play. Hold him. for the coup de gaz. Man, you get killed. Drum. Drum. Uh, 
If you think you have much longer to live, you're even a dumber nigger than I took you for. Maman! Maman. Stay in New Orleans any longer. The Marigny will kill you. He should be arrested and jailed. But it would be the word of a white man against two black men. But you're a slave trial. Don't ever forget that. This belonged to your father. He believed while he wore it, he would have the strength and courage of the lion he had taken from back in Africa many years ago. My ma always refused to speak of my father. Gambora was a royal horse, son. King. And the handsomest Negro I have ever seen. Remind me of him a great deal. Rachel was so close to me that at times I feel like your own mother. I'm gone now. I want to rest. Well, I could use me some good news. I couldn't buy a decent nigga today. I have decided to sell you drum. Good. Just one condition. You also buy his friend Bless. Well, that'd be fine if in this Blaze be a sturdy boy and he's got his studs making, that'd be fine. Of course. He's also got a girl he's close to. I don't want no attachments. I'm using them for breathing. And I found a woman for you. Oh, did you? And she's not a whore. I hope you're not disappointed. Well, I'd ask for a hoe. Well, she's dainty. She's a young woman from a good family who was in the street. Mm. 
Well, that ain't a hoe, but that ain't exactly a lady either. Would you like to meet her? Yes, I sure would. Hammond? Miss Augusta Chevet? Hammond Maxwell of Falconhurst Plantation? Ma'am? Perhaps you'd like to talk to her for a while? No, uh, uh, I could never talk to no white lady. She'll do just fine. You quite sure, Mr. Maxwell? Oh, yes, ma'am. I ain't gonna be pinching on you and feeding you like I does my nigger wenches. I ain't getting you for bedding and breeding, you know. You won't get me, Mr. Maxwell. You are hiring me. You a white woman, all right. Whee! Gussie, what do you think? Well, he's much handsomer than I imagined. And he's rich. I just could manage to fall in love with him. And become Mrs. Hammond Maxwell. Will y'all be my first house guest? I can't go with you. Because the new master doesn't want you. I'll run away where you is. You can't do that. They don't like find you, send you back and beat you. Well, then I'll tell them I'll kill myself. It's better if you never chose me that night. After all, we never see each other again. Could be never. Trump, don't go. I love you. Don't go. You, Glenda. But maybe niggas shouldn't love. White folks say we can't because they think we're animals. Drum. We'll never be asleep in each other's arms. Never be holding and kissing. I'll never be seeing you in the morning waking up. Drum. Mr. Maxwell is waiting for you. Cool. Miss Augusta, ma'am. Who is that? This is Regine, ma'am. I brought her for you this morning. I thought she'd make a nice house servant for you. Well, thank you, Mr. Maxwell. Unless, of course, I get a hanker for her myself, which I reckon I already do. Regine, it's better than if you sit back in the other wagon. Drum, come on up here and see if you can drive this rig.
You braze me, boy. We're gonna get along just fine. I'd rather have you like me than hate me. Ain't nothing to do with a sulky slave except selling. Lordy. Of course you do have some human blood in you. You ain't all nigger. And that's probably why you're gonna hate me sometimes. But that's all right. That's just the human part of you coming out. Just one thing I don't like about you, Drum, is you don't talk niggerish enough. You talk like a school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't had no education, have you? No, sir. Well, that's good. Because it's against the law. Yes, sir. Can't own no property, neither. You know why? Because I can't buy my freedom. Hmm. You sure you ain't had no education? No, sir. We get back to Falconhurst. You see if you can't talk more like my other niggas. Go on. Please take the luggage into the home. What a beautiful house. Well, I can't take no credit for it. My daddy built this house long years ago. But I know you're going to enjoy your stay here, Miss Augusta. Come on around the bags there, boys. That's it. Come on. Oh, my goodness. Ha, <laughs> ha. I thought you pay any attention, those two old boys, Lucretia boys, are there not oh. worth a penny of your thoughts. Oh, 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 I got the prettiest apron for you. <laughs> it's good to be home. That flew down the St. Louis Hotel was just awful. Drum! Drum! You fetch your master. This place is a pigsty. You tell him. You tell your master I absolutely will not stay in this house unless it's cleaned and fixed. Now go on, get. Get. You know the best thing to do when a white woman get a hair across her ass? Get the hell out of the way. That's why I ain't gonna come back to supper. <laughs> so you go gather up some bucks and winches and mops and brooms and take them up there and tell them to do any damn thing in the world Miss Augusta woman do. And you and Blaze, you take the room over the kitchen and I'll tell you what, tell them to put Regine in the bedroom over mine. That'll fix them. Regine gets the room over his with the stay away there? Because she's going to be his bed wench. Bed wench? Bed wench? What a vile, vile word. You get her a broom and you put her to work. Regine, Mr. Gusta wants you to do some sweeping and cleaning. Drum, I've been to five different places in the last two years. It's fine. It's fine. Thank you. Oh, my word. There sure is a lot of dust. 
moving on with the lamp here. That Miss Augusta, a mighty efficient woman. Lordy, but she sure got a tongue on her. Who are they, Papa? Them? Drum and blaze. They gonna be our new house servants. These pretty nigger boys. Can I have them whooped if they's naughty? Shut your mouth. I does a whipping around here. Miss Augusta, this is my daughter Sophie. Miss Augusta is gonna be like a mama to you. Lucretia Boyd, you're like my mama. Well, all right then, I'll be like your aunt, Aunt Augusta. You ain't gonna do that regular, is you? <clears throat> well, I see you've been a messin' in the kitchen. <laughs> the show ain't kitchen wench cooking. It's mighty pretty. Well, I must say, I do have a definite tendency toward perfection. <laughs> Seeing as you're in such a good humor, Mr. Maxwell, I would like to have two extra girls to work in the house. Edna and Fronia seem very competent. Oh, no. They're too young. I can't have them in the house with Blaze and Drum. I don't like to breed them that young. Mr. Maxwell, Sophie shouldn't hear those things. Papa, why don't you put Blaze with Balsam and get some good suckers out in her? And Drum, give him Elvira. She's a pretty wench, and everybody's saying she's in heat. Sophie, there's a present for you in my room. It's on the bureau, wrapped up. You go get it. Though Sophie is 18, speaking personally and as a lady, I find this talk intolerable. Well, Miss Augusta, you're just not acquainted with the young ladies hereabouts on these plantations. You see, they're playing house with their brothers and their cousins and their friends. And time to get to hell on the wedge. Except, of course, my daughter, Sophie. Mr. Maxwell, you are crude. Very, very crude. I never said I weren't, ma'am. Well, one thing I will not stand for is intercourse between the slaves inside the house. Do you expect me to waste these boys a sub on the table? These are strong boys. They got strong yarnings. Their sap is arising. Now, I don't give them winches. Then they're going to be after the white ladies. And then I got to castrate them. Heavens, no. Let them have their wenches. Just restrict the intercourse to the back rooms of the kitchen. Blaze, balsam is yawn, drum, Elvira is yawn. And I'm going to give a brand new shiny silver dollar to the first one of you gets his winch knocked up. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hammond. Drum, you still ain't talking niggerish enough. Did I hear you say mister instead of master? Yes, Mr. Master. That'd be a joke. I never heard a joke from a nigga before. Go on, get out of here. Get the hump in. <laughs> Lordy. Must you persist in being a Bulgarian, Mr. Maxwell? Miss Augusta, you just got to get used to the idea that nigga fornicating is what Falconhurst is all about. If my nigga stop fornicating, then we stop eating. Since the conversation has descended to this level, I feel I can boss my feelings concerning your bedding with regime every night. Well, I don't do it every night. It's bad for my liver. I don't think you should do it at all. Now, Miss Augusta, you ain't gonna start meddling around in my plume tang now, is you? Good morning. My, what a beautiful day. What's going on here? I just thought I'd bring a little breakfast for you and uh, your lady love. You thinking this bit funny? No, I'm thinking you two are probably quite hungry. Regine? It ain't proper for a white woman to be sobbing a nigger wench. And it isn't proper for a white man to make love to a nigger wench. What we've been making ain't love, Miss Augusta. You plan on doing this again? And why in heaven's not? Because if you do, I can't be having me no bed wench. I know. That's the idea. You've got to make your butt go up and down with the horse. 
Hold up there now. That's good. That's good, drum. Hold up there. Hold down, whoa, hawks. <laughs> That's real good. I'd crazy you do some supervising for me, too, drum. And I want you to do the whoopings. I'd rather not do that, Mr. Hammer. You're going to be my number one boy. You're going to have to do that now. Don't you stand up to me now. Best nigga I ever had did that. He made that mistake. He made another one, too. He let his pecker get him in trouble. I don't want nothing like that happen to you. So don't you go running off wherever your pecker points. You understand? to play with me? I know it's a nice game. You get away from me, Miss Sophie. You's a pretty boy. And you was a gonna play with me. The plays and the other bucks do, and you is too. Miss Sophie, I'll tell your father. He tells him in your skin and fire you alive. I'll say you rape, done rape me. Miss Sophie! She is starting in with you. Ain't a boy on this place that don't want to run when Miss Sophia coming. Always unbuttoning their pants and a playing with them. Well, Miss Sophia, a bad one. Why don't somebody tell Master Hammond? Because she white. I know boy Dad's go tell Master Hammond. They scared for fear he'll kill him. Perhaps he'll kill Blaze. Or even worse, castrating. Blaze. You been fooling with Miss Sophie? Is that what she said? Because I don't know what you mean. You know what I mean. Letting her unbutton your pants and play with your snake. She's lying. She's troubled. She follows me all around with a titty sticker to my face, but I ain't never touched her. If you're lying, or Miss Sophie is. Drum. If an eye looks through a keyhole, I see Miss Sophie on the other side peeping back at me. Now, who are you going to believe, that bitch or me? Just making sure, Blaze. Just making sure. Well, Drum, since you've been supervising, everything is looking good. Real good. I'm proud of you. Sure proud of you. Never play with me. You worse than hell. You'd get a nigga killed no matter what. I don't want to play with you. Well, if and you don't, I'll just tell my papa you tried to rape me. Listen, Miss Sophie, you play your damn games with the other bucks. Blaze is my friend. If your papa find out, hell, he'd kill Blaze. Mind your own damn business! Get! Just get! <laughs> Blaze, what the hell are you doing? Are you following me around, spying on me? I was afraid Master Hammond might find you. You heard him talk about nothing, slaves. And you still don't believe me. You think I'm lying. It's 
It's plain Miss Sophie's chasing after your fly like a horny toad. But I'm not so damn sure you don't want her to catch up. Pretty body, Miss Gusty. Miss Augusta, I gotta be going to Master Hammond now. Regine? Yes, sir. Wouldn't you rather be with Drum instead of Mr. Maxwell? Yeah, now. Walk around a little mite for me, Regine. I likes to look at you. You've got a pretty shape to you, Regine. Not as pretty as Miss Augusta. That a fact? Mm-hmm. Miss Augusta got a real pretty shape. That's so? She got the prettiest oh. shape I'd ever see, black or white. She got a, a tiny waist and an ass that go like is skinny legs. She got skinny legs. That's so. And titties. You like big titties, don't you? Oh, you know I love big titties. She got big titties. She do. Well, I can't tell a fucking thing underneath all that cloth and she's wearing. Sure you can. You just got to know how to look. Social life is very important. Well, what if I'm happy without one? Seems no point having a fine house if no one comes to visit, Mr. Maxwell. Ah, uh, women. They always got to have what they call a social life. Why are you looking at me in that odd fashion, Mr. Maxwell? Papa! Drum's got a mark on his eye. Suppose he's been fighting? Drum, where'd you get that bruise on your eye? I was carrying a ladder. I tripped and hit him in the eye. You lying. I know it's when a nigga's lying. Got to. Nigga liver lying. You don't want to tell me. Who you been fighting? I haven't been fighting, Master. Another thing, we still ain't talking niggerish enough. Except for Master. Now, you get every one of my bucks out in front of my house. I'm going to find out who you've been fighting with. Go on. Where be Blaze? Where be Blaze? Now, somebody here is going to tell me where Blaze is. Where is he? Where is he, I ask you? In the 
Geçin. What you two boys are fighting about? What you two boys anger fighting about? It wasn't a real fight, Master Hammond. We were sparring and training like we used to in New Orleans. Bar. Looked like a bull run across his face. You call that sparring? Well, I call it fighting. Who started it? I did. I started it. And I'd do it again, too. Two lying niggas. Fighting, I don't allow no fighting. Five weapons for you, drum. Thirty for you, Blaze. You started it. Now get the walking. Hit them on the fat part of the rumps. And don't hit them on the knockers. Now, <laughs> Blaze! Now, Blaze! Every thirty. Every thirty. Every thirty. I get 30, you get five. You leave Drum B. He the best friend you ever had. That white ass licker ain't no friend of mine. Drum tried to keep the master off your hide. He tried to keep you from being sold or something worse. Ain't nobody gonna sell Blaze no more. What a cemetery battle. I was born free as any white man. And I'm gonna stand up to it. I'm holding myself north the first chance I get. I'll run away. Please, the road patrol will get you for show. At that right. They'll heel hand you treetop tall until you swing and dry in chains. Or maybe they'll lop off your tassel and feed it to the hogs. Or maybe they'll sell you to that whip snapper, Massa Montgomery. Who he? Satan himself. The worst of the slave traders. To hell with him. I got freedom in my heart and I'm going to grab it. Don't gobble, don't let eat your dinner. Miss Augusta, you is perfect, just like you say you is. 
Ever since you come here, everything is looking better, including Sophie. Why? Yes, you is. For someone that ain't exactly a lady, you sure know how to make a house a home. <laughs> oh, drum. Drum, I'm thinking about giving you Regine. Now, I ain't sure, but perhaps. How long you figure it take you to knock her up? We'll have no more of that talk while we're eating. Well, Miss Augusta, I reckon that you'd be happy to hear about that. I can get me a prime sucker out of him, Regine. And if it's a male, I can get two, three thousand dollars for it in New Orleans. Mr. Maxwell, you have every right to run this plantation as you see fit, but you have put me in charge of the house, and I forbid, forbid, any further talk about the sordid details of your business and my presence. Sit down. Mr. Maxwell, I am a white woman, not black. And don't you dare use that tone of voice for me. I'll use any goddamn tone of voice I want to use. And I'll say any goddamn thing I want to say. Then you'll be saying it to somebody else. If you will excuse me, I am going to my room. I am packing my bags. And I am leaving. You ain't leaving! You intend to chain me to the bedpost, Mr. Maxwell? It's time you learned some manners and conducted yourself like a white man and not a negro. Who you calling a nigger? I got you from my whole house and you ain't even a hoe. Ah, oh, let her go. Let her go to hell. Eat your dinner. I am sorry, Miss Augusta. I know nothing of conversing with polite ladies. I know nothing of culture. I'm a slave trader. And of course, you've seen them dragging their line of hapless creatures along the road like some catfish on a stringer. Well, that's all I am, and all that stands between me and that is the treasures of this household. I need you, Miss Augusta. Mr. Maxwell, that story that Mariana told you, that was false. She felt you would not accept a lady. The truth is, Mr. Maxwell, I am a pure woman. Sophie, I have some wonderful news for you. Your father and I, we're going to get married. Oh, Paul, you ain't going to marry that uppity bitch! Shut your yappa chow! Oh. My dear Augusta, as you can see, my daughter plainly needs manners. Well, now that I'm going to be your stepmother, I want you to be refined and educated in the best possible manner. Your father and I agree you should be sent to Miss Pentecost School for Young Females in Mobile. Papa, no, I ain't! Yes, you is! Hammond, uh, I think we should be planning on our first party. Our engagement party. Yes. I think we should invite the Holcombs and Dr. and Mrs. Redfield and Mr. and Mrs. Gassaway. Papa, you sent me away and, and I'm going to tell you, tell you something you ain't going to like. What? One of your bucks has been fooling around with me. <coughs> who, who, who be that? Who be that? Who be it? Blaze. It was Blaze. Please. You come with me. I ain't gonna talk about this in front of Miss Augusta. I'm gonna hear about this from A to C. Now, what Blaze do? Nothing, Pop. Nothing? I was just a saying that. You wasn't just saying that. I was just a saying that to get you mad. Sophie, I'm gonna turn you upside down until a lie pop right out in your mouth. Now, you tell me. Blaze wanted me to unbutton his pants. Did you? No. Then what? Then what? Well, then he told me to close my eyes and, and hold my hands out like this. Uh, go on. 
Well, well, then he put something in my hands and, and, and told me to feel it and, and rub it and keep my eyes closed up. And then he asked me, how does it feel? And I says, it feels good. And, and then he said, says, tells me to open my eyes and I open them and, and, and I look down and it was this thing. I was holding this thing, Papa. How long did you hold it? I, I dropped it right away, Papa. What did you do then? I ran right off and washed my hands. Well, how come you didn't run off when it commenced? I was too scared, Papa. Sophie, I'd feel a whole lot better about this if you was crying. I is, Papa. <laughs> well, uh, uh, there, darling, no two breaths. <laughs> hey, with two people in this world going on about this, but you and me. What about Blaze? Blaze is going to be dead. I'm going to make up my mind about you. Time on. Small ass nigger. Take yourself a good look and see what you're missing. I can't believe what I'm seeing. You go to school faster than that goose shit. No, I ain't going. You're at his house. Congratulations, Hammond. <laughs> Thank Very long, Kitty, though. Getting a wonderful woman. Yes, I know. Everyone looks so very respectful. Should I conceal the fact that I've parade a whole house? Don't be naughty. There's not a man here that hasn't been to your establishment, and not a woman ain't dying for looks. <laughs> and so now it's just a motivated one. Chevy and you're acting ridiculous. Don't ever speak to me like that again. She has a Oh, excuse me. Demonye. Hello, my friend. How are you? Very nice. Oh, uh, boy, with just a moment here, how would you like to have a drink? 
Tell me what's going <laughs> on you. over in New Orleans. I ain't been there. Wow. You know. They want them cheap. So to get them cheap, they got to get them free. Hammond, you want some mighty fine looking studs. Like that one. You for sale? No, I ain't, but I got others. I got one I'm trying to get rid of, but I wouldn't sell him to a friend. I'm going to hang him. His name's Blaze. Blaze? Is that the Blaze I owned? Oh, no. I ain't going to tell you what he did. But he's been making a damn fool out of himself, and I'm going to have him hung, or worse. No, 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 no. A worse punishment than death is castration. Uh, you kill a nigger, it's over in a few moments, huh? But with castration, the nigger's got to live with no balls the rest of his black life, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Once all the house niggers was cut, so there's no strapping bucks running around with the pants popping out in the presence of white ladies. How you do that, Doc Redfield? Simple. Just grab it by the balls in one hand. With sharp raise in the other hand, one swoop, and he's nutted. Oh, oh, my God. God. This is my Ladies and gentlemen. I would like to make a toast. To castration of all men. No more mothers, no more fathers. Fathers like our dear de Marigny and Lazare. Cheers, everyone. Mr. Master Hammond, there's a slave chitter outside wants to speak with you. Says his name is Montgomery. That swill pig. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, some people don't know enough not to interfere with a man's social life. Evening, Mr. Maxwell. What the hell you want around here? Just passing through. Wondering if you've got any niggas you're willing to part with. I got a boy I wouldn't mind getting rid of. I ain't doing no business now. I got a party. Put your bed down over here in this old house. It'll be all right, because we pull up inside. Taken kindly. These good boys are your usual. These all runaways. Well, he ain't going to run far. He got a little light foot, so I had a hamstring him. You don't have to worry. They're all chained tighter than a bull's ass at fly time. Well, I'll put them over there in the barn. But you make damn sure that they're linked to the wall. Because I don't like the looks of none of them. I didn't buy them because they were daisies. All right. Let's move this capital into the barn. Get him up. You want to sleep, boy, and get your ass in that barn. In you go, children. Ow! 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 Like it is to stumble around hurt they fail. Master Zeke Montgomery. Meanest son of a bitch devil trade in all Louisiana. Buys runners and uppities and sells them to the hard ass planners where you lucky if you live a year.
Please. Please. What you want, you white licking stitch? Damn it, it wasn't me, it was Sophie. How many times I gotta tell you that? Your white ass to start crapping white shit. Master Hammond says he's gonna castrate you. Then you best bust these chains. I'm hanging to be free. They ain't never gonna let you be free because you're black. Black ain't the color of freedom, and white ain't either. Blood is the color of freedom. I'll get you loose. Good night, gentlemen. Ladies. It's wonderful to see you settle in. Does any of you bucks want to go free? Yeah, I'll, I'll go. go. I'll go. Fresh Link be the only one to bust. I don't want no chains right along behind us. They'll still catch us. No, they ain't. We'll fix it so they can't follow us. This man will pass us a white man for a slave deal. And we'll be his cow for following along behind his wagon. Master Montgomery are going to tell them road patrols. Come tomorrow, mother. There won't be any Master Montgomery or Master Hammond. We'll kill them and all the rest, including the house niggas. We have not before anybody here. If we're lucky. Well, it's been a lovely evening and it has to come to an end. I'm going to retire. I thought we'd get up early in the morning and have a good breakfast. Lucretia Balls is probably the best cook in this whole area. I believe my is okay. Well, now that I'm going to be mistress of this house, Mr. Maxwell won't be wenching anymore.
Get buckets, get kettles, fill them up with water, yep. with some sacks. That fire spreads, it's going to be hell to pay to get. Get, get, get. Drunk of here, that is. What about the Harmon? What about the Harmon? We know about the fire. Oh, it ain't the fire, it ain't the fire. What about the Harmon? What about the Harmon? No, Christian Borgia. Oh, Master Harmon, they're coming to kill you. What? They're coming, Master Harmon. Who is it? Lucy see it. I see it. They're coming. Who is They're coming. All them niggas have come. All them niggas have come last night and blaze. They get loose. They got bars, pig frogs, and sickles, and they're coming. Guess wait. There's two horses standing still. You take them, ride them over to Wickham Plantation, and bring help and a patrol on the road if you can find them. Drum, get them boys out of the kitchen and start packing that furniture against the windows and the doors and everything. Go on. Now, ladies, ain't no sense in getting scared. Y'all gonna help, too. So go on, do what you can. Boys, come on in here. These cupboards is full of guns and take all you can handle. And we don't want to mess around with reloading. Hey, there, yeah. Open up there. We got shot and gun. In here. Take all that. <laughs> Back to the barn and bring back burning logs and torches. Go ahead, move. They armed. They got guns. Get me water. Get me rags. Hurry. If they got a torch in here, we'll be trapped. We must charge them. Well, hit the fire and shot, boy. Go Mr. get Hammond. it. Another way. There ain't no other way. Talk to them, Master Hammond. Go out and talk to them. Talk to them. Wild black will lick us. These people are your friends, Master Hammond. You want them living or dead? Tell Blaze that if they give up, they won't be killed. It's got the decision to make. The law got something to say about that. Then let me go out and talk to them. Perhaps. Hammond, you are not seriously considering a negotiation with niggers? I want to be killed by niggers. Oh, very well. Let him. to me, Blaze. You're outgunned and more white men are coming. There's nobody coming. We're going to kill everybody in that house. We may be still a little black meat to some of those white women. You got to use your head. Listen to me. I ain't listening to anything. Master Hammond promises if you surrender, you won't be killed. Take the word of a lion, killing white man. I believe Master Hammond. You believe him? They take our men and turn them into good and faithful dogs, happy to eat a white man's leaving. 
They tell us we're winches to pleasure like horses. They sell our children and then we lick their hands. Use your head, Blaze. You'll all be hung when they catch you. After they nut you first. for you, Drum. We've got an old score to settle, haven't we? Zany not kill us when you got chance, boy.
You better run. You better run like hell. Hammond, all you have to do is say he was lying. There's nobody left to tell. No. No. You stay here, I got to have him killed. I got no choice. sometimes then all of a sudden they just go crazy like some kind of mad critter once they get human blood in them they just can't act like proper niggas no more One time, oh, I die. One time. 